Well, a very big trend right now is about aging assets. So we have to do um, lifetime extension for a lot of our uh, aging assets. So a lot of focus there to see where, where is the cutoff limit. So technologies around that and other technologies around uh, doing things more efficiently. So with the current oil climate, uh, a, lot of, a lot of technologies around uh, synergy that, that take a lot of preference. So a couple of things. Um, we're going to be working on simplifying standards. So simple, as an operator we have a lot of complex standards which we impose upon the business uh, contractor world. We also we want to simplify that. We want to use uh, more defined um, scopes of work so to reduce the risk and lower the price. Uh, another trend that we're going to be seeing is um, improved uh, inspection technologies on subsea pipelines. So things like uh, robotics, AUVs, AIVs, uh, specific fast swimming survey RVs. Those technologies with high, um, high frequency data uh, will reduce cost. So a lot of focus on that, say, sort of say underwater drones. Uh, right now, I, th I see a little bit in the current oil climate, a slowdown in, in uh, deep water areas. Uh, it's probably going to continue in Asia a lot. So I think the emerging markets in Asia will develop some of their assets. So uh, some of that we're going to see and then maybe eventually um, based on technology developments, we don't know how fast that goes and cost reductions, uh, the deep water assets may cope uh, and come along. Uh, these are long term projects usually. And so we are, you know, when you talk about uh, big projects, we're talking about long-term planning. So you can look in your crystal ball and I can look at it. Nobody knows what will happen in 2025. So I think that these long-term developments will go on and the short -term, shorter term developments, they will be uh, slightly postponed. Technology gaps is right now on uh, subsea uh, surveillance. So we need to see a lot more technology and a lot more data about the integrity of our assets. That's what's happening in the North Sea, um, but also other areas in the world. Um, we're still looking for um, smarter ways of doing um, most of the capital expense in a project goes into offshore equipment. So smarter ways of install, reducing the installation window that, that we believe still can, can reduce cost. Um, but it's also in soft ways. So reducing engineering hours, um, having, having more definition, reducing the risk to the contractor means less engineering uh, hours, means less risk to the operator eventually. So one of the innovations I think that can happen and is getting, it's happening already is the um, electrical heated pipelines where a pipeline really becomes a process tool. So it's not just a transport medium but it is also a capable of um, reducing friction. It, it is more an uh, actual, it requires an actual operating skill. Um, these are costly pipelines, but for the more difficult recoverable oil and gas, it is, uh, it is something that can bring great value and it can increase your um, reservoir recovery grade. So previously maybe uh, below 50% recovery, that, that can increase to say 70%. Um, other technologies, um, I think we're going to see a series of te technologies to the more harsher areas and explored areas of the world, such as uh, deep buried pipelines, um, such as leak detection. We, we do need uh, to maintain our license to operate and that leak detection is very much a part of it. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot more in that area.